morning. I greet you in the name of God the Father Almighty and our Lord Jesus Christ. When you enter the sanctuary this morning, you are handed an order of worship. This order of worship will age in the worship of Almighty God. All the hymns that we sing, the confessions that we say, everything in its order is in this order of worship. So if you did not grab one, you could raise your hand and a nush will gladly bring you a copy of this order of worship. There are two announcements that I want to draw your attention to. One is this, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper, but we will also be administering the sacrament of baptism. And so we will witness both sacraments that the Lord Jesus has given to his church next Sunday. So be praying, praying for our service next week as well. Also, you will notice in your uh, order or in your announcements that we have a foundations class weekend coming up in April, April 26th and 27th. This is going to be a class on the foundations of our Christian faith, the foundation of the Reformed faith, as well as Covenant Presbyterian Church. If you have been visiting and you would like to join the church, then this class is a requirement for you if you are a member and you just want to come and refresh your memory, uh, or if you just want to come and fellowship with us, uh, please come and, and be a part of that class. There will be dinner and there will be breakfast and lunch that will be provided. If you plan to come, you can email Liz at the office to let her know. If you are unable to attend this class, but you would still be interested in joining Covenant, email that also to Liz and we'll figure out something uh, uh, for you as well. I don't know where you are in your spiritual journey. I don't know the things that will and can easily prevent you from worshiping the true and living God. But this I know, he's worthy of our attention. He is worthy of our worship. Let me, let me ask you stand as we are called to worship. As you stand, we proclaim to each other and to the watching world, Christ is risen. risen We're called to worship from Revelation 5, verses 11 through 13. Then I looked and I heard around the throne of the living creatures and the elders and the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the land who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Please be seated. pray. Lord, as we gather in your name this day, we gather worshiping the true and living God. We know that Christ is alive, that Christ is the feet of the grave, and that is why we gather this day, to worship the true and living Savior. So we pray that as we gather in your name, that all the different elements that we do this day, the singing, the hymns, the preaching, the prayers, 
our confessions, may they all be for your glory and for your name's sake. For it's in your great name that we pray, Jesus. The one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we are about to confess to one another the Apostles' Creed, I draw your attention to the fact on the third day he rose again from the dead. That's referring to our Savior, a risen King who's sitting at the right hand of God the Father right now as we speak. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, we have the great ability where we can continue to remind ourselves what the Lord has done for us. If you will turn in your order of worship to page 2, you can respond as I read the question from the Westminster Larger Catechism. How is the grace of God manifested in the second covenant? The grace of God is manifested in the second covenant in that he has freely provided an offer of sin that is near in the life of salvation by him and the requiring faith as a condition to attend to him. Promised in the giving of the Holy Spirit with all his elect to work in them and with all of the same grace and to enable them to answer the obedience as evidence of the true manner. You see all, you know all. And Lord, you know our hearts this morning. You know how much we have sinned. You know how much we have wandered from you. And yet you have loved us. You care for us. And you've poured out your mercy upon us. Lord, it's not just empty words that you have given to us in a book, but Lord, you have shown us your love and that you have sent your son to come here on this earth to live and to die and to raise from the grave and now to, to be seated at your right hand. And Lord, he is interceding for us now. We call him our king, we call him our savior, and we call him our brother, Jesus. So Lord, as we reflect upon these things, as we are amazed at the fact in which you have loved us first, we come to you, a needy people, knowing that we need you to hear our requests, knowing that you have promised us as you hear our requests, you will be good to answer them. As, as fitting in your will. Lord, we pray that you would be with us, your people, Lord, all throughout the world. We think, we think of all those that are uh, worshiping you this morning. We think of those that, that are able to sing out loudly and to, to give praise to you openly on the streets. But Lord, we also think of those that are suffering, those that are in war-torn lands, those that are, that are challenged by the physical needs in which are presented before them. We pray that you would be with your church, that you would continue to be with her, that you would raise her up, that you would allow her to be light in the dark places. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Kenya who are facing persecution. We pray that you'd be protecting them, that you would continue to grow them, that you would allow there to be continued laws that would grow forth, that would allow them greater freedoms. Lord, we're thankful as well for the leadership in which you have given us in this nation over the many years in which it has been brought to pass. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bring new leaders that would come forth and the old leaders that would continue to rest upon your word. We pray that you would bring a great awakening to, to this land. We pray that you would bring out of that great awakening a great revival. We pray that your church would be found strong and waiting and Lord, that the Spirit would move in powerful ways. And Lord, as we think of the church, we're thankful for the ways in which you have given us this church, the church that has blessed us in so many ways in which we are able to hear the word preached, the ways in which we're able to see the sacraments administered and partake of them ourselves, and we are able to join with one another in prayer. Lord, we're thankful for the many Bible studies, for the Sunday schools, for families that are able to gather together uh, individually and uh, separately to, to be able to worship together as a family. We thank you for this wonderful gift of your word and the benefits of it. Lord, we pray that you would be with the individuals of this church. Lord, we know that as, as we come to holidays, as we come to times in which great memories come up to mind, Lord, there is also great tenderness. There's sadness that oftentimes comes in because of the loss of loved ones. We think of the ways in which many are mourning. They are missing those that they would love to celebrate with this morning. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be with hearts Lord, that you would be the salve that continues to bring healing. Lord, we think of the ways in which many are, are brought low. And Lord, we, we thank you for the gift it is that we have a body where we can encourage one another, where we can be in fellowship with another. So Lord, we pray that as a church, we would minister to one another and we would lift each other up. Lord, we do pray for the disappointments in life, the challenges in which we've been faced. We pray that we would not listen to the lies of the evil one, but Lord, we would find ourselves looking to the promises found in your word. We pray that we'd be encouraged by them. Lord, we think of the, the wonderful blessing that we have to have visitors or maybe individuals that, that haven't come in a, in a while. Lord, we pray that you would continue to, to lay it up upon each one of our hearts to come and to gather. And, and the need it is for us to worship together as believers, we pray that we would not be ridden with guilt, but Lord, that we would come and worship out of joy, that we would want to be in the fellowship of believers because we know it's good and what you have desired for us. And so, Lord, as we as we have gathered and as we are needy people, we pray that you would be with your servant, Jamie. We pray that you would be with him as he brings your word. We pray that you would keep him from error, but that you would use him as the, as the tool and the instrument that you have set him apart to do, that as he preaches from your word, that we would be attentive, that the Spirit would move and that hearts would be changed, that lives would be transformed, and that you would be glorified. Lord, we also are thankful for the opportunity we have to come this morning and to give an offering to you out of the abundance that you've given to us. Lord, we pray these things in your Son's name. Amen. As our morning offering is collected, let us be reminded from Proverbs 11, verse 24. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds that he should give, and only suffers want.
If you'll pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for your sight because of what your Son has done. Lord, we're thankful for the choir and the offering in which